don't want to hear my name mentioned at Sports Center in a negative way. He said, I want a positive. Tubby Smith told us last week in Tuscaloosa, they don't like to play by my rules. They can go play somewhere else, and it seems to be working this year. He said, I don't have to please anyone. They have yep. to please me. Now look at the GMC starting lineups. Florida with a Matt Walsh, a freshman, a big-time score, and another one in Anthony Roberson coming off the bench. And Kentucky with Hayes and Daniels. They don't get a lot of attention outside the SEC, but they're the glue guys on this team, really help out in a variety of ways. Well, Bogus with a little curl move, but you're right. You know, Hayes, how good is he? He has 17 and 16 against Notre Dame. Nelson feeling it, misses the three. Kentucky with the ball in an early two-point lead. What a steal by David Lee. Nelson spinning on Fitch. Might have gotten away with a shuffle there. And it's going against David Lee on the offensive foul. Good call by Jimmy Burrow. What a crew we got on the game tonight. Valentine, Parker, D, and Mr. Boy, Burrow. As you look at Billy Donovan, former assistant at Kentucky, was on the same staff with Tubby Smith. Tubby told me the one thing he remembers most about Billy Donovan. Great work ethic. They coached together for a couple of years under Rick Pitino here at Lexington as we've got a foul away from the ball. Learned so much under Rick Pitino. One of the great strengths of Pitino is preparation, scouting, some of the facets that make him a great coach is his ability to prepare at practice, and that's rubbed off. I think Tubby and Billy Donovan's greatest asset is their preparation at practice, the repetition over and over and over again, drilling in certain areas of the game. Their intensity and their passion as good as any coach in America. Bogans with a three. What an improvement he's made in his shot this year. Well, he's had a big-time year. I was at 16 points a game. Flirted with the NBA. Would have been a disastrous move on his part. Now, steal by Bogans. Two on two. Trying to force his way over Lee. Daniels with a follow. They got so many people that can hurt you. There's Daniels with the offensive rebound. Hamilton quickly down to the other end, knocks down a tough jumper. We have said so many times how unselfish Justin Hamilton is, and he's a defensive stopper. He's one of the real warriors in the game. Matched up with Bogans. A call away from the ball goes against Kentucky. I can't get over the pace of this game and the environment. It is so electric here. It's NCAA tournament style. Two unbeaten teams in a premier conference, maybe in America. You can make a case also for the Big 12. Amazingly enough, this is the first time that a number one team has come to Lexington since? to play the Cats since Indiana did it in 1979. And Indiana left with a big L. That's right. Kentucky was number five at that time. Hard to believe. No other number ones have played in this building. Uh, as the folks here in Lexington say, that's because Kentucky's always number one. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they play in a conference and play against people that yeah. beat each other. Bond of the rebound on the pitch miss. By the way, a minute or so ago, it was not a foul on David Lee, just a turnover, so he has not picked up any fouls. 12-7, Kentucky. Walsh, wide open three, and he knew it. I'll tell you one thing, he's not afraid to take the big shot. We saw his debut on the collegiate level in the NIT, scored 26. His dad's a Hollywood scriptwriter, and he said, I couldn't write a better story about my son than his debut in college. He's had 33 against Miami, 22 against Kansas, and now he's in disbelief as the foul call evidently goes against him. What a start we've got here tonight between wow. two of the top teams in America, an amazing atmosphere here at Rupp Arena tonight as a couple of former coaches on the same staff, Tubby Smith and Billy Donovan, go at it here tonight. I think Kentucky's got some uh, some maturity. Uh, they've got some players that have been in this league. Not riding the sh shirt tails of what Kentucky used to be. They're trying to make a name for themselves. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Dollar Rent a Car. When it's your money, log on to dollar.com for our lowest rates. And in part by GMC, we are professional grade. And GE, imagination at work. 
This is all a part of Super Tuesday, presented by Dollar Rent a Car and a super matchup to say the least. Florida number one for the first time ever in school history. Kentucky number seven. We saw them against Louisville right at the end of December. In the second half, they got blown out, lost by 18 points. How have they changed since then? I'll tell you one thing, Dan. Think about it. You lose to Louisville, but not only do you lose to Louisville, you lose to the darling, the former superstar here as a coach, Rick Pitino. Put all kinds of heat on Tubby Smith. The talk shows were going bananas, but all he did was roll up his sleeves, go to work, and sell to his players the value of defense. And since then, they have been playing suffocating defense to the tune where they've ripped off 10 consecutive victories against quality competition. That tells you a lot about the character of Tubby Smith. In conference play, they're holding the opposition to 57 points per game, and there's no question. Kentucky and Florida, one of the best rivalries around right now. With more on that, here's Andy Katz. We had Dick's talking about losing to Louisville. That is by far Kentucky's best rivalry. That's what the coaches say. But if you talk to Florida, without question, it's Kentucky. They've shared the SECs three years in a row. SEC overall champions 2000-2001. The Florida players get up for this game more than any other. Well, you know, Andy, it's becoming Tubby versus Billy as a big rivalry, just like Michael K against Gary Williams in the ACC. Bogans, another good look, and another made three-pointer. He feels it. You watch him in the warm-up. He was shooting the ball with confidence during the warm-up drills. Keith Bogans has matured as a player. Shot selection, so important to his game now. Justin Hamilton, he's looking for his shot quite a bit here early tonight. Jules Kamara into the game now off the bench for Kentucky. Gerald Fitch with a quick three. Offensive rebound, Bogans, but he throws it away, and Nelson is behind the defense. Missed it. He's anticipating Kamara, who's a shot blocker, trailing the play, and that really bothered Nelson. Chuck Hayes is called for the foul. You're going to take a look at right here. Bogans squaring his body, steps right in the gap of the defense, and he drains it. Good shot selection. Poor job by Fitch, and the shot he took was too quick. Nobody's quite sure who's going to the line right now. It's been called a shooting foul on Hayes on that follow attempt after the missed layup. And nobody stepped forward for Florida to the free throw line. Now finally Justin Hamilton gets the honors. Justin, one of those kids that we talked about is so unselfish. And if you want to win, you have to have Hamilton's on your club. He's a good defensive player. See, he was bothered there by Kamara. Then there's Hamilton, and they pulled the foul on Hayes, making contact on Hamilton. Asked Billy Donovan this morning about Justin Hamilton. I said, in one sentence, what's he all about? He said he's all about winning. Doesn't care if he scores. All he wants to do is play defense and set up his teammates and win games. He's from out of Sarasota. Played a vital part also by going to the Boys and Girls Club of Sarasota. They helped him tremendously. In fact, he's going to be honored on uh, sports night that we have out there on April 22nd. Cliff Hawkins, Antoine Barber check into the game. And now for Kentucky, Anthony Roberson and Vanel Colas come off the bench for Florida. Both of these teams will go eight or nine deep with some very effective players off the bench. Hawkins certainly has been valuable since he came back from his academic problems. Give him some point guard play. There he is with the rock in his hands. He's a very quick guy, loves to penetrate. Hayes double team. Kamara thought about it. Very tough to scout a team like you look at Kentucky because they have so many different guys that can hurt you every night. It seems someone else steps up. And Florida can say the same thing. They've had six different players lead them in scoring in a game, and six different players score at least 20 points in a game this year. Well, one of the best performances I ever witnessed on the tube was Anthony Roberson, the kid with the rock in his hand. Seven threes in the second half and hits the nail fighter winner at the end. And there he is knocking it down against Georgia with a hand in his face. He drains a trifecta to win the game. A Jarvis Hayes hand at the end of a six foot seven inch body and I know the first time you and I saw Roberson against Louisiana Tech you were impressed with him right away oh you have to be impressed you watch five minutes of the kid up and down and you can see why he was so heavily recruited by Duke and also by Michigan State I think they got a lucky break in that Marcus Taylor was still part of the Michigan State program or I think there's a possibility he might have headed to Spartan country interesting well, he's a big part of this Florida success right now with more on the Gators let's go back to Andy Katz what everything what, what all the coaches have been so impressed with is the unselfish play not just by the freshmen but also by the seniors they've accepted sometimes a complimentary role and that's been the difference in the streak for the Gators Sometimes Bonner doesn't score a lot. Sometimes Hamilton doesn't score a lot. There's Bonner from the elbow. No. Follows his own miss. 
Kamara and Hayes in there to defend, and here come the Cats. No blocked out assignments out of the zone. Florida rotated into a zone defensively. Look at that pass from Daniels to Kamara, but a block by Colas. Daniels tries to put back. I tell you, look at the toughness inside. I mean, they are going at it, baby. They are going at it. Look at the hustle. Look at the scrap. Look at the claw. Look at the diamond. I mean, are you kidding me? He's going to make the old John Madden team. <laughs> oh, man. Warbirds. Watch him inside. I mean, that's not the place for anybody weak, man. If you're meek or weak, you don't want to be on the interior here. Look at him scrapping and clawing and hustling. Florida, number one in the nation. Sounds so strange yeah. in basketball. It's not Steve Spurrier in football. It's basketball. <laughs> they were number four last week with the top three teams, Arizona, Pittsburgh, and Texas, all suffered a defeat in the last week. And Billy Donovan said today, I don't know if we're the number one team in the country. The guys ahead of us all lost. He said at the beginning of the season he didn't think they should be ranked very highly at all because they hadn't earned it. But they have earned this number one ranking with the way they're playing right now. Ah, that's typical coach speak. They're <laughs> always crying and moaning. Are you kidding me? He'll tell you, he knows, tell you the truth. He knows that these kids can flat out play, man. He's got a lot of big time prospects and players on his team, and he does a great job coaching them. He's got Christian Dreyer in the game right now. Mystery by Barber. Off the fingertips of Dreyer. Yeah, he touched that ball. The outstanding prospect, the freshman from Denmark, who suffered a hip injury, then a sprained ankle, got an infection in the ankle, had to have an abscess removed, and only started playing for Florida in the last couple of weeks, and he's only playing 10, 12 minutes off the bench. And here he is with a steal. He was labeled by many to be a top 20 selection in the NBA draft, and he come out early last year. Roberson misses the three. Polis runs it down with more on Dreyer back to Andy Katz. And the amazing thing, guys, is that actually all these NBA scouts are here still to watch him, still at this point in the season. But the Florida coaches told me earlier they can't get over how much he's bought into that team concept. That's for the difference. Lee turns it over. Two on one Kentucky, and Hawkins pulls it out. Esther, he's got a strength advantage on Lee. That's where they got to go inside. Bring the ball into the interior. We watched him perform brilliantly in the second half against North Carolina. He's a kid that could score against Louisville. He only took two shots, and that is an absolute no-no. He's got to get touches. There's the steal by Kentucky. Puck is pushing the ball up the court. Now he's going to back it out. Good basketball IQ and then dump it inside. Bring it to the big fella. And the big fella wheeling in the three-second area with the score. Rivalry week will continue tomorrow night. Another one of the hottest teams in America, Rick Pitino's Cardinals, now at number six, taking on a Cincinnati in a Conference USA matchup. And then ACC Wednesday presented by Staples. Nikki V is going to be in Durham to see the Blue Devils take on the Tar Heels, North Carolina. I'll tell you what, big time. Duke at home is so special. They are absolutely dynamite at home. And that game, I don't care, as long as the jersey says North Carolina and it says Duke, and you got the Cameron Crazies going bananas, and they are a great advantage to their team, especially at home. It's a special place. Full court pressure now by Kentucky, and Florida turns it over. Good job by Kentucky. There's that suffocating defense. Elena Azubuki has made his first appearance in the game tonight for the Cats. And we've got a Florida foul. It may be David Lee. You know, how suffocating has their defense been? I'll give you three examples. Against Vanderbilt, they fall down by about 14. Second half, they go 46 to 16. Hole of the four field goals. And also against Alabama, 12 minutes with no field goals and 11 and a half minutes with one field goal against Auburn. Tubby Smith working hard. We'll talk a little Rick Pitino and some connections when we come back. With you in the studio, Providence and Pittsburgh tight game late earlier on ESPN2. Jerron Brown going inside and using all of those 229 pounds to fight and get his own and stick it back. The team that might have been number one, winning 68-61 over Billy D's alma mater. That's right, or East Billy D played there under Rick Pitino. Then, of course, Billy D, along with Tubby Smith, coached here at Kentucky on Rick Pitino's staff. This is from 1989-90. Also, Bert Sendek and Ralph Willard on that staff. And as we get a close-up look at how 
They all look 13 years ago. Patino hasn't changed at all. Tubby's lost the mustache. But look at the do on Billy the Kid. I tell you, that was the younger days of Mr. Donovan. Look at him right here, like a little kid. Incredible. And Patino, you tell a lot about a leader by the people he surrounds himself with. And that was one of the great, great staffs in college basketball. Estill back into the game for the Cats. Finds Fitch on the baseline. And the Florida shot. And we've got a foul going against Florida. Look at Billy teaching defense, something he never played when he played. All he wanted to do was shoot the jump shot. He played in 87, as we said, with Providence. They went to the Final Four. That was the year that Indiana and the Hoosiers cut the nets down with Steve Alford and Nel the general. Brett Nelson in the backcourt for Florida, along with Roberson. Up front, it's Lee and Dreyer and Polis. Well, you mentioned Final Four. The last two times the Final Four has been in New Orleans, Billy Donovan has been there as a player at Providence. Bogans again, and his assistant at Kentucky in New Orleans is where it is again this year. I tell you, what a great job in attacking right there, Dan. The zone defense. Florida rotated into a 2-3. They used the skip pass at the open Bogans. He takes the high percentage shot in terms of a good shot. Nobody on him. Kamara rips down the rebound. Kentucky going big right now with Kamara and Estel. Bogans again. And Nelson just does save it in bounds. Florida's going to have to respond. They've been very good on the road this year, but they're down six here in a very difficult atmosphere tonight here at Rupp. Roberson the miss. Polis with the rebound. No! Kentucky staying in that zone defense, not playing their normal man-to-man. -man. Even though this year they have shown the zone, they utilize it against South Carolina. Excellent passing team. They don't have a legit point guard, but everybody can pass the ball. Listen to this crowd. These fans are so passionate. Back in December, they were worried about their team. They were booing them down and again. Bring it inside. Just bring it to the big guy inside. That's their game plan. Wave it off. Wave it off. Foul yep. the they want to pound it inside. Going to dump it into Estill. He's got two people all around him. They follow him before he releases the ball. John Clockerty right on the call. Christian Dreyer picks up the foul. His first. And as you mentioned before, at times Estill seems to be almost indivisible. And at times he's absolutely dominant. Exactly. He has that kind of ability. But he's got to make himself available a little more, Dan. He has a tendency to disappear a little bit. He doesn't really make himself feel available. Pull this out. Bonner in for Florida. Kentucky with the ball and a six-point lead. And Bogans going for the kill from the perimeter here in the first half. He has missed his last two threes. Good look from the corner for Walsh. Rebound, Bogans. Florida really does a great job of fanning out in transition, getting to the three-point line. Bogans finds Kamara. Baseline jumper long. And it's out of bounds to Florida. How do you think these freshmen like Walsh and Roberson will respond to this kind of an environment here tonight? Oh, I don't think they're intimidated at all. I think these kids really have played so much basketball in their life as scholastic kids, played AAU competition. They really great players want this kind of environment. This excites a great player. Well, I was here this morning when they walked in for the shoot-around, and not one Florida player gazed up at the banners, looked around and on. They came in, took off their warm-ups, and went to work. And it's easy in a place like Kentucky or North Carolina to get to look up at the rafters and get caught up in all the history. Well, they're like museums. I mean, you go down to the Dean Dome, it's like a museum. You see all those jerseys there. They're doubling up inside every time the ball goes past them. Great anticipation there by Nelson. He's got trailers as he is fouled on his way to the bucket. He's got a trailer, but you can't communicate. The young kids out there, if you're ever trailing, you've got to communicate and let them know that you're behind them at all times. See, right now, he's got a trailer. he got to communicate. He's coming right at us, man. He's got to flip it over his shoulder, and they got to lay off. Bitch with the foul. His first sends Nelson to the line. Shooting just 30% on the season. And they need some sustained offense like they've had recently from Brett Nelson. You know, he had such a good year, his South Boy year. Back that year, he and Tayshaun Prince were the two best players in the SEC. And he had some injuries, then he struggled a little bit with the adjustment of moving away from the basketball. And then after a while, I think it becomes a psychological problem. Mentally, you start to struggle. Florida has missed its last 10 field goal attempts, yet they still find themselves down by only four. Now, how many teams do we see that happen to that plays against? They're bringing it inside. That's that game plan. The same stop the big guy. 
They're saying it's a mismatch on the interior. Tubby Smith, preparation, understand strengths and weaknesses of his people. Estill two for two inside right now. When they get him the ball, he knows what to do with it. Walsh. Florida relies on the three more than any team in the SEC. Hayes out of control, throws up a prayer, and Estill wave it off. The foul goes against Marquise Estill, his second. Estill over the back. You know, you mentioned about Florida shooting the threes, Dan. They're shooting them too quickly. They're not making the extra pass. There's Hayes, a little bit out of control right now. Flips it up to the glass. There comes the offensive rebound by Marquise Estill right over the top. There's the contact. He says, no, 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 23,000 agree with him, but there's only one guy that counts, yeah. and he's wearing a striped shirt. Estill to the bench with his second foul. He averages only 23 minutes per game because of foul trouble. If they could ever keep him on the floor for 30 or 32 minutes, he'd be dominant. Exactly. On his own defense being played right now by Kentucky, getting away with it against a good shooting yep. team like Florida. They got four outside shooters on the floor right now. Walsh inside is fouled hard. And the freshman from Holland, Pennsylvania, will go to the line. Tomorrow night, it's NBA Wednesday on ESPN2. The Atlantic Division leading New Jersey Nets take on Allen Iverson and the Philadelphia 76ers at 7.30 Eastern Time. Coverage begins with NBA shoot-around at 7. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, this guy really opened up a lot of eyes back in November with 26 in his debut against Louisiana Tech. 33 in a double overtime win over Miami. His scoring is down considerably in SEC play, but Billy Donovan says he is still one of the best passers on the team, and he's really cut down on the turnovers. We saw some wild passes early in the season, Dick. He's pretty much made that a thing of the past. Yeah, he's trying to make the spectacular play, and he said, look at my hair. I'm just jealous that he's got hair, oh, man. Me too. <laughs> and he says simply, I'm going to cut it when we lose, and I don't intend to lose, so I'm keeping it, baby. Florida hanging in, down four here at Rupp. For the next game's due here at Rupp Arena in Kentucky tonight. A few of them, in fact. What an environment it has been here tonight for Kentucky and Florida. Rivalry week presented by Novell. And with Billy Donovan's Gators presenting a real serious challenge to Kentucky for SEC supremacy. What a great choice for rivalry week this is. They're both unbeaten in conference. Florida's number one. Kentucky's number seven. And when Marquis Estill has been in the game and in the paint, he's been getting it done. Well, there he is on the interior. If he gets any kind of space inside, he's going to score. If he gets any lane to the basket, he knows how to finish. Here he comes over the top for an offensive foul there. Upset, gets number two. Rivalry week. What a week. Yeah, Kansas, Missouri, what a game. I mean, it's the Coliseum. When they got their A game on, they're the best and the one two in America, inside, outside. Estill on the bench with a couple of fouls. Kamara on the bench as well right now. So Kentucky has gone very small by their standards. Fitch with an open look for three. That's for his mom, Ruby. Oh, She's okay. listening down to Macon, Georgia. He said, I had a mature. I didn't want to disappoint my mom. Last year, he was really a problem here, and that's really matured this year. You have not heard any problem out of Lexington so far this season. This team's got chemistry, a magical word, chemistry. Hamilton the miss, Daniels the rebound, Kentucky on the move. Look ahead for Bogans, and it's off his fingertips. You know, I mentioned the word chemistry. If you talk to some of the Giants and coach and Mike Krzyzewski, Roy Williams, John Chaney, Dean Smith years ago, they will tell you the value of chemistry. Players understanding their roles and people really devoted to the jersey they're representing, the name on the front, and not caught up with trying to get glory for themselves. And that's what Kentucky and Florida are about. Unselfish kids who put winning as their priority. Kentucky doing a great job shooting the ball from the perimeter so far. Florida's gone better than seven minutes without a field goal, and that'll continue now as Roberson gets called for the offensive foul. And that's no accident. Billy Donovan has done an amazing job to get his program the number one in America. New coming in here, they're going to see some tough defense. There's the offensive foul. Hawkins beats him to the spot. I was talking earlier, they've been 11 and a half minutes at the end of the first half and allowed one field goal to Auburn. 
they went in the second half after being down 14 and only allowed four field goals to Vanderbilt on the road. And you and I had them against Alabama 12 and a half minutes without a field goal. And then nine minutes in the second half, Chuck Hayes with a three. Chuck Hayes, 17 points, 16 rebounds against the fighting Irish from Notre Dame. Give them one of their three losses. Listen to this crowd. They're going bananas at rough. They're going wild. College hoops doesn't get any better. Moss worked it hard inside, and the redshirt freshman from Houston finally snaps the drought as Florida comes up with a bucket. With a bucket. And I think Florida's got three fans. I see Christine here, Billy Donovan's wife. I see Jeremy Foley, and I see they say the president's here. So they got three people here. Three most important in Billy Donovan's life: the AD, the president, and his wife. Bogan's on the drive. What strike? And it's down here. That's the four. And it's back to a ten-point lead, and now for Kentucky. This Kentucky team is a different team than what you and I thought down in Louisville. Over the Christmas break, Tubby Smith got them thinking about defense again, and did they ever listen? Look at the effort here as they force the tie-up and get the ball back on the alternated possession. And you know who he's got their attention defensively? You can speak all you want to the kids about defense, but until they understand how important it is, he took the film of the Vanderbilt second half. And he said, take a look at that second half as you look at Billy Donovan, as you see them hustling defensively, Kentucky. He said, take a look at that second half. That's why we won the game defensively. And they have bought into his philosophy. They were giving up over 70 points per game in non-conference play. 57 so far from the SEC. And you can see that Florida, as talented an offensive team as there is in this league, which is one field goal in the last nine minutes. Well, they need the conference in offense, Florida. And right now, as you said, this is not Cupcake City holding them to one field goal. Pitch follows his own. Mason throws it back here. And that's the versatility of Pitch. Yes, his mom, Ruby, can be proud of her son. He told me today, I'm not going to let her down. Listen to this place. I know tomorrow will be better with the Cowboys closing. This is why I got 12 years old instead of 63. I can't get the ball. He's got a mismatch over Bogans, but Daniels came back and helped lock the shot. They can't get the ball where they want to get the shots they want. Kentucky doing a great job defensively, mixing defenses. Bogans with a game high 11. Fitch has chipped in with eight, but again, it's the Kentucky defense. The early story. Bogans again, and he's got 13. Former Damascus star made a wise decision staying in school, or he would have been a basketball vagabond. Alec Brizard and Omar Cook, Marcus Taylor, but he made a smart decision, keeping that jersey on that says Kentucky. He has done it from three-point range this time. He comes off a screen and knocks down the 17-footer. There he is, coming off the little curl move, utilizing that screen effectively. Look at Fitch now. A little penetration, gets right into the three-second area. Then he comes up with the offensive rebound. Good follow. Nobody blocks him out. 14-point lead for Kentucky. Let's bring it Andy Katz. Andy? Well, guys, this is where senior leadership will really come in. During the huddle, you could see Brett Nelson really very animated, joining Billy Donovan, really getting on the teammates to really get going here, to settle down. And you could just read the body language that these players, especially these seniors, need to gather this team so this lead does not get away from them. This deficit doesn't get away from them. Well, you know, Andy, as opposed to, let's say, North Carolina, who we see tomorrow, they have leadership with seniors versus just a club loaded with freshmen and young players like Matt Doherty has. This club's got the perfect blend. Young people and old people. As you look at the shooting breakdown here, only 25% for the Gators. Nelson misses a three. That is not even close, man. That is Brick City, USA. What a first half by Kentucky. Executing offensively, defending, and beating a really quality team here in the first half. And this is the way they've been winning the last few weeks. You look at some of their margins of victory as Fitz knocks down another three, and they've been pounding teams. If they make the three, they are almost impossible to beat. When they have lost, they have shot poorly in those three losses from the trifecta. Nelson 
just got the ball down on the hardwood in the nick of time, or it would have been another turnover. Roberson, 4-3. No. Florida, 6 for 26 from the field in this game. That's like 23%. You know, in their losses, they were 2 for 22 versus Virginia from the three. They were only 3 for 18 versus Louisville. Fish, step back jumper, and the rebound to David Lee. Florida's got to cut into this deficit before the end of the half. And Kentucky's done a great job defensively in transition to take away the running game, not allowing any fast break opportunity. Something that Florida thrives on. Hamilton can't turn the corner on Bogus. Listen to the crowd appreciating the D. Bonner inside, tip no good. Kentucky ball. Bonner's got to deliver. They're looking for their senior to step up. That's why Duke got beat on a roll by Florida State. Duhon and Dante Jones were three for 17. Your seniors have to step up on the road. Up the young kids. Billy Donovan doing some serious pacing over on that Florida sideline. He's going to go back to his bench again. Bogans. Oh, what passing. What passing. What a block by Lee. It was Bogans to Daniels to Hayes. But David Lee, the sophomore from St. Louis, comes up with a block. Now Lee shows his versatility. Good player can utilize either hand. Because they did a great job moving the basketball. Lee with his off hand, it will drop. Jim Burr's got a foul on Daniels. That's one of the strong suits of Kentucky that doesn't get recognized a lot. Dave Odom talked about it. Their great passing ability of all their big people. More great college basketball action comes your way tomorrow night as Rivalry Week presented by Nobel continues. It's number six Louisville taking on Cincinnati. The Cardinals, and this caused much consternation here in Lexington, leapfrog over the Wildcats in the national rankings this week. Also, North Carolina and Duke. Dick will be in Durham tomorrow night. It's a one-sided game. Favor Kentucky right now. Well, Chase Wright, outstanding. It's about the only way to describe this performance here tonight. Super Tuesday, presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car. This all, of course, a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Novell. This is a great rivalry, a great rivalry in the SEC, but right now, Kentucky just smothering them again. How good are these cats? Well, they're shooting three so well, seven for 12. I think, I'll tell you how good they are. If I had to put a Final Four together right now, they would be one of my Final Four. I really believe that no matter what happens here the rest of tonight, I love what this team brings. I love their defensive ability. And remember, at tournament time, the game becomes more half-court oriented, yep. and that favors their style of play. And defense is, becomes a dominant factor in the tournament, and that's a strong suit. Kentucky's one of my teams that I'm picking to go to the Final Four. Bogans muscles his way through and misses the shot, so you don't leave us hanging. Who are your other three? Well, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, think about that at halftime. I need a few weeks. <laughs> Nelson and Daniels with a block. This is an unbelievable defensive performance by Kentucky. Well, as JJ said, they challenge on every shot. They take pride now. They really take pride in the defensive effort. Watch the rotation over by Daniels with the block shot. He's got great size for a guy that can play on the perimeter. So look at Matt Bonner having a tough night here. To... There's a lot of frustration in the Florida players can't, right now. Can't even get the ball in. In the last 12 minutes, the Florida Gators have one made field goal and a total of only six points. And it certainly wasn't for lack of preparation. You should have seen Billy Donovan before the game. Andy Katz and I were by the locker room. His preparation was incredible, Andy. It was unbelievable. Coming up on the Mass Mutual Halftime Report, we're going to send it back to the studio. Reese Davis and Jay Billis will look into the game you saw earlier tonight on ESPN2, another one of the top teams in the country in Pittsburgh, taking on the school where Billy Donovan once played, Providence, an 8-10 showdown in D.C., and a look at the UConn women's ongoing streak. Well, you know, you mentioned Connecticut. Certainly want to send our best wishes for a speedy recovery to yes. Jim Calhoun. Jim's a fighter and a competitor, and we know that he's going to beat that disease, prostate cancer. Jim, we're all praying for you. We're all cheering for you. That reminds me also tonight, I met a coach here, John Hoff Brown, from West Carter High School in Olive Hill, Kentucky, battling brain cancer, and he's beaten that big time, and he's coaching tomorrow in the state 
championship shield. Do you believe that? Oh, Do you believe it? That's a bad play, though. You're a veteran player. You never flip the ball under the basket. You just don't do that. That's a no-no. All set up, though, by the fact that, again, Florida couldn't even get the ball in bounds. Oh, look at this. By Bogus. This is a humiliation. Jam City. It's an embarrassment. Number one, Billy knows what a way to be number one. Coming into Rupp Arena. This Cats team is for real, my friend. Kentucky ball again. Never an easy shot. It's embarrassing time. He keeps calling timeouts. He keeps changing players. Nothing is working. Now we got a foul going against Kentucky. They're certainly not going to call the timeout now, but it's really gotten embarrassing the last few minutes. Look at Billy sweating. He has a great sense of pride. There's the pass to Hayes. Nobody rotates back. I mean, look at the bad pass here. You're going to see this is a bad play. You flip it right under the basket. That's an easy layup. I could catch that and score, Mr. Shulman. Well, they said they weren't going to be intimidated or rattled by the atmosphere here in Rupp, and they do have three senior starters like Nelson, Hamilton, Bonner. They've been here before, but I don't know that any of these guys have ever faced a defense like this. Or a crowd like this. Hey, let me tell you this. We might just start talking about everything. Okay, you're going to ask me, what do I are think you, of LeBron James? Are you saying James? it's over now? I mean, you're it's, saying it's over? Well, don't look too good. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> that free throw snaps a 15-0 run for Kentucky. You know that Billy Donovan is frustrated when he's not growling and pacing and stomping. And he's been just sitting down for the last couple of minutes. What's he get? What's the coach to do? I'll tell you one thing. He'll get there in halftime and get their attention. And the first 10 minutes is certainly going to mean a great deal in terms of trying to get it to about 8 or 10. You know, I was telling the story about this John Hop Brown, yeah. a beautiful man. I met his family. His daughter is the leading free throw shooter in Division I in America for Moorhead State, shooting 94% candy. And we want to wish Hop Brown all the best. He's going to the Duke Hospital on February 11th, but he's coaching here tomorrow morning, and he's battling a brain tumor. man. I could just simply tell you, I met his family tonight. And they dedicated the name the floor at his high school, West Corner High School Forum. A great, great guy. Billy's got so much pride. I'll tell you one thing. He's a beautiful guy. What he has done in Florida is amazing. What he has done for that program. The achievements there, going to the championship game in 2000. They've accomplished things under him in the last six years they had never accomplished before in their history, including being number one. Just as of yesterday, this is the first time the Florida Gators have ever taken the floor as the number one team in the country, and it sure doesn't look like it's going to last very long. Well, maybe being number one's a nightmare. Just ask Mark Gottfried in Alabama. Yep. They went 9-0 in number one before losing to Utah, and now they're down to 22. They came back and got a win against LSU, and Maurice Williams finally was Maurice Williams. Duke was one. Arizona was one. Florida right now, but it's Kentucky looking like the best team in the country. They're looking phenomenal. They have played fantastic. Kentucky has been awesome, baby, with a capital A. Their fans have been awesome, baby. The environment's been awesome, baby. It's been a brilliant performance by Tommy Smith and the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's go to Andy Katz. Tommy, how effective was it switching defenses on Florida tonight? Well, you know, it shut them down. We were able to do some switching. I thought we went with a smaller lineup, and that was a big key. And I think it confused them a little bit. Kind of took away their, they're very effective in their half-court man-to-man offense. So I thought that created some confusion for them. Well, good luck in the second half. Great first half. Let's go back to Dan. All right, Andy. Confusion, to say the least. A dominant performance by Kentucky, leading by 23 at the break. Mass Mutual Halftime Report coming up with Reese and Jay. Guys? Dan? One field goal in nearly 14 minutes of play. Glad to have you with us on the Mass Mutual Halftime Report. Florida has had a wonderful winning streak. They have been very impressive throughout. But I think I've seen a team that could claim to be the number one team in the country in the first half. They just steamrolled them. And I think Kentucky really takes their character from their defense. It's a team that their offense flows from their defense. They wind up scoring off some turnovers that they get. But I think all of the aggressiveness they throw into the defensive end winds up benefiting them on the offensive end. And I mean, for crying out loud, Bogans and Fitch outscored Florida all by themselves. They had 26 points together in that first half. Their defense is just stifling. You wonder how anyone ever gets a field goal against that defense. 
Kentucky up 45 to 22 at the break. Coming up on the Mass Mutual. And in part by Rolling Rock Beer, Crabber Rock. Super Tuesday, presented by Dollar Red Car, a stunning first half here at Rupp Arena at Lexington. This is all a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Novell. You saw that shot of Keith Bogans after the jumper in the first half, and the incredible confidence in his face, and that's the way all of the Kentucky Wildcats have to be feeling right now. Well, they're so confident because they know they're going to get a supreme effort defensively. That was the best half of defense I have witnessed in many, many a year. They all helped out. They played the passing lanes, and they did it against a super offensive basketball team. The crowd was into it. Everybody was into it. All the players, the coaches. Look at those numbers. Florida, 20%. 6 of 30 in the first half. Kentucky got 15 from Bogans, 11 from Fitch. They wanted an incredible run at the end of the first half where Florida went about 13 minutes making only one field goal. Well, the Florida starters had 16 total points. Bonner, when you take a look right down here, look at this. The Florida starters had 16 points down here. Unbelievable. And the bottom line is also when Bonner, you look at Bonner and you look at Lee, they didn't score a point. They didn't score a point. Let's go to Andy Katz. Andy? Well, out of the Florida locker room at halftime, the concern from the coaches was that their post guys played soft. They got frustrated, and that's why the team was shooting too quick on threes. They said if they have any chance to get back in this game, it'll catch here. You've got to start inside and then out. Look at Andy with the hands. And you see the catch? Yeah. Microphone in the, in the right hand. hand. Basketball in the, the left. Andy, great hands. Left I, hand. I know you can't shoot the ball, though, Andy. With the <laughs> great hands, hand. Andy. Andy, I know you got great hands, hand, but you can't shoot the rock, baby, because I embarrassed you in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. <laughs> Hey, when you're physical, that really adds so much to your club. That's why Pittsburgh's had an outstanding year. Daniels and Lee got a piece of that. A loose ball comes to Florida. What do you imagine other than the big guys? I mean, did Billy Donovan peel the paint off the wall at halftime? What do you think he said to his team? Not really. I think he's got to come out and say, look, let's play this game in segments. And I think the one thing they're going to try to do is utilize the three-point line to effectiveness. However, Kentucky on the perimeter has really locked up any good looks at the basket. You know, Bonner in the last three games has only taken seven shots or less. They got to get him more involved offensively. He's too good, too talented. A minute into the second half, but a huge lead for Kentucky against the number one team in the country, the Florida Gators. Hamilton trying to shake Bogans. And Bogans almost knocks it away from Walsh. They match up, they get right in your face. They never give you a good look. Nelson can't get the shot off. Florida turns it over again, and Bonner is called for the foul. They never allow you to get a good look. They absolutely get in your face. You take a look right here on the inside. Now take a look right here. Try to reverse the best. Freeze it right here. See how they come right up in your face? They come right up into your face. They never give you a good look. Look at the hustle right there, Bogus. I tell you, he has really played a total consummate game today, offensively and defensively. You know, Dick, I know you have sung the praises of Tubby Smith many times as a coach, but they lost three games before New Year's. They also had Barber out with a broken hand, Daniels ineligible for four games, Hawkins ineligible for seven games. They were allowing a lot of points, and this coach, Tubby Smith, turned this team around over Christmas and New Year's and has made them into the one of the dominant teams in America right now. Well, you and I sat in the office with Tom Izzo. And what did Tom Izzo tell us? If I had to write five names down in the yep. five best coaches in America, one of them would be Orlando Tubby Smith. And Tom Izzo knows a little bit about coaching. That's what his peers think of him. He's a fierce competitor. And there's his wife, Donner. She gave me a gift today. I got a kiss from her as well. A tie-up, and Kentucky's going to get it back. The body language is not very good when you look at the body language right now of the Florida players. Sometimes, look at this double team right here. Look at this double team. They're right all over you. I mean, they are coming after you with great tenacity. Bogans finds Estel just two for two in nine minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. But the way Bogans and Fitch played, Kentucky didn't need any offense from Estel. Also, they'll be cuddling up on the inside. Bogans for three. Hayes for the loose ball, tries to run it down, and it's out of bounds to Florida. That's the first hurried shot that Bogans has taken. 
the first shot that wasn't within the realm of their offense. We have had just a single point scored so far in the second half, and that was by Florida. The moron Chuck Hayes back to Andy Katz. We're talking to the staff before the game. They said they implored with Chuck Hayes to be that tough guy for them. In fact, they said they give him six assignments. Everyone else gets two. Uh, Dick talked about his game against Notre Dame. 17 points, 16 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 blocks. All career highs against the Irish. Seems every game somebody steps up. You got Fitch gets 25 against North Carolina. Then you got Esther goes off for a big game. Great back punt. Diagonal pass. A breakdown defensively by Florida. I mean, Florida really with a poor performance here tonight. Offensively and defensively. You want to break down. You can see this Kentucky team enjoys defense and enjoys passing as much as they enjoy scoring individually. Well, you know, the defensive effort now becomes contagious and really now they enjoy playing on the other side as well. Now look at this. Defense goes into offense. There it is. Defense to offense. Defense to offense. Play good defense, you get rewarded. And look at this. They reward you with the big blue. There's smiles. There's chemistry. Give them some love, Tommy. Give them some love. Matt Walsh, the foul, his second. Fitch will go to the line. Take a look at the way. He fills the lane, the good 45-degree angle. We're going to see right now. We're going to watch a back cut. Watch the back cut right here. Freeze it. See, right here. He's going off that screen, going over the top, and they got themselves a layup. There it is, the back cut. No communication. You have to communicate on that screen. you got to say, back screen, back screen, talk to one another. Mr. Schulman, I'll tell you, we are seeing an A-plus performance. I mean, Dr. Schulman, give out some A's. <laughs> well, he's going to shake get that haircut. That's right. He's, he's cutting that hair. It off. He said, i got to shave it off. Cut it off. Well, you know, I was just thinking back to... Uh, the tournament in Washington when Notre Dame did Maryland and Texas back-to-back, -back, that maybe that was the most impressive thing that a team has done all season. But given the opposition tonight, I don't know that anybody's had a more impressive game of basketball than the Kentucky Wildcats are having right here, here tonight. Well, certainly being at home is certainly a big plus. And Florida was really set up big time, coming in number one in America. I was teasing Billy before the game. I said, how beautiful it is, your name number one. And the bottom line is, where do you have to go to play <laughs> down a rough arena against a team that's been on fire? Well, Kentucky's going to have to go back down to Gainesville, of course. Kentucky's already still got a couple of games coming with Georgia. You and I will be back here a week from tonight for Georgia and Kentucky, a part of Super Tuesday. But right now, this has been an absolute mess for Florida since about the 10-minute mark of the first half. Well, you know, Darren, Kentucky out of the next 10 games, four of them are against Florida and Georgia. But you look at their non-conference schedule, playing Notre Dame, Indiana, Virginia, Michigan State, Arizona State, Gonzaga. I mean, they're ready for these kinds of battles because of who they schedule. Well, they should play those kind of teams. You're talking about one of the great programs in basketball. Finally, to miss the bottom on the inside. That's why you have over 1,800 wins and 13 Final Fours. And you look at 41 SEC championships, 23 SEC tournament titles, 10 seasons with 30 or more wins. People have said, and a lot of them are here in Lexington, and they're right. Backdoor cut, oh. Hawkins wide open. This is getting out of hand. Well, they're not playing any defense. Yeah. They are not. The effort is the effort is not there at all by Florida. The effort is not there at all, and that's not a Billy Donovan kind of basketball team. He's got to be very, very upset with the effort of his kids. Their backs against the wall instead of fighting and clawing and scrapping like he did in his career. They are sort of backing away. UK more than doubling up the number one Florida Gators, making it look easy at both ends of the floor. Wow, wow, 52 25. Since the beginning of time, there have always been rivalries. The lines are drawn, the emotions are high. And you must choose which side are you on. Well, the side to be on is definitely the side of the Kentucky Wildcats here tonight. A stifling defensive performance holding Florida to 25 points in just under 25 minutes here tonight. A 27-point lead for the Wildcats. And they've had very few open opportunities all because of the defensive pride. 
Bonner, and he is fouled under the basket. You know, Dick, over the years in the SEC, there have been challenges offered by other programs. Dale Brown at LSU contested Kentucky's supremacy of the Arkansas. SEC. Nolan Richardson at Arkansas. A lot of teams for a year or two try to shove Kentucky off the top of the mountain, but nobody's been able to do it for very long. Well, Look at all those banners. I mean, that's that's the legacy of Kentucky in the SEC and national. Well, as I talked a little bit earlier about their 1,800 wins and all their trips to the Final Four, their national championships, SEC titles. Think about what Tubby's achieved in his short tenure here. This is only his sixth year. He's got three SEC tournament titles. He wins the national championship. He goes to the Elite Eight. He wins or shares four SEC titles. They should build a monument for him instead of complaining. <laughs> yep. Every time they lose a game, it's like the end of the world. And he is the only, he's the coach of the only team in America that Dick Vitale will tell us on the record is his pick to go to the Final Four. The other three are leaving blank right I'm now. leaving them blank right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's too early, but I love this Kentucky team, and I love them even when I saw them get beat by Louisville. Hawkins inside to Daniels. Look at the passing at the offensive end. And that's what Davey Odom was talking about after he played there. Their unselfishness, their movement in the basketball, and the number of players they have that know how to pass the basketball. Me and the Bonner when the jump point is there. About time to get the ball inside. You know, against South Carolina, Carolina, they have 34 field goals, and 22 of them were attributed to an assist. Yeah. And they don't have one guy in the top 10 in the SEC That's in right. assists. But as a team, they're one of the top teams in the league. They have five guys averaging at least two assists per game. Hawkins calling for it. What a different team in terms of their chemistry, their togetherness. We're not talking about AU equals gold either, yeah. or PB <laughs> equals lead. See, I do it. I pass. That's I, very good. Hey, I pass chemistry. <laughs> A pass off the head of Hawkins inside. Tubby Smith's old. got four bench guys in there right now. It's too old as water. Give me some <laughs> What a struggle. Every offensive opportunity is basically a struggle. This Wilbur's had a great drive. Almost went to Duke, but they signed Dockery, and that sort of eliminated Duke in his mind. And Billy Donovan really excited about Wilberson. Billy Donovan's a guy with a lot of pride. This club's going to have to bounce back strong against Alabama, but they're at home, and the Roddy Reptiles will help them in that environment. Let's get an update from Andy Katz. Andy? The concerns from Kentucky's coaching staff was maintaining their focus in the second half, and we're seeing a little bit of that right now. We'll see if Florida can, can, can sustain it. And such a big lead, sometimes hard to maintain that intensity, but if, if your coach has the fire in his eyes like Tubby Smith has. I don't think it'll be too tough to stay intense. Well, you're not going to stay close, Andy, if you don't guard. And Florida is absolutely not guarded. There's no defensive effort at all. This club is doing everything they want. Look at this. It's a little fast break layup drill. It's embarrassment time. It's humiliation. Where is the pride in these Florida Gators? Where's the pride of Billy Donovan? Billy Donovan played with intense pride, and I don't see him right now out of his Gator players. Another turnover. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for number one. We don't make a lot of the problem. It's off and indie. And with Mooch and Motown, did someone get the shaft? Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Sixty to thirty-one, Kentucky mauling the Florida Gators here tonight. The Gators stay as the number one team of the country. It is going to be an extremely short one. Kentucky charging up the rankings. Louisville charging up the rankings. They're number six right now, and they're on your TV tomorrow night. Purdue, a good Purdue team that's doing a great job for Gene Cady this year with a good backcourt and low indeed. They lost that game, but they didn't have Marvin Stone. With Stone and Gaines, right now they have not been beaten yet. In fact, Dick Weiss told me to find writer from New York today. He voted number one. Number seven, Kentucky, all over number one, Florida. Here at Rupp Arena tonight. That is not a misprint. That is 60 to 31. Billy Donovan's team has been outworked, out hustled, and outclassed here at Lexington tonight and in danger of suffering the worst defeat, the most lopsided defeat in the Donovan era in Florida. And I would imagine, Dick, one of the most lopsided defeats any number one team has ever suffered if this one continues going as it's going right now. After being named number one, you know, and you're looking at Billy's club the last three years, plus this year, they have led the SEC in scoring. Last year, 80.5 a game. 
the year before 80.9 and the year before that 83.8 and this year they're leading it again today but yet they have only 31 points here but billy donovan will get these kids back they're too talented and they got too many good athletes and they're too well coached they got great fans down at gainesville they will be tough to be taken out by alabama on saturday they will come back this club they just keep turning it over and kentucky keeps making a pay at the other end not this time and now it's roberson leading the gators ball you know you and i saw the game with louisville and you would never have thought that kentucky would be in this position to win their 11th in a row when we witnessed that second half but good coaching can get people back especially if you got some good players and they have so many good players florida but El Colas the foul away from the ball. You know what they've done, they've done here tonight? They are really looking at one another, hoping that somebody would have given them a spark. They're waiting for somebody to lift them, and there was nobody to lift them tonight. They've been out of, there's no spirit. Usually watch this club play. They play with a lot of energy, a lot of spirit, a lot of enthusiasm, and that has not existed. And you credit that to Kentucky. Justin Hamilton. One of the senior starters, and all three of them are on the bench right now, by the way. He was the guy who tried to vocally rally the troops coming out before the second half. But it has been a replay of the first half for Florida. Kentucky's been able to do anything they want, offensively, defensively. Every loose ball, every second opportunity, every hustle play is being made by the Cats. They made this look like Cupcake City, my friend, and you and I thought we were going to have a mailbox match here. Oh, everybody did. Yes, sir. We thought it was going to be a barn burner. First time in 24 years, the number one team comes here to Lexington to face Kentucky. Oh. And they sure haven't looked like number one or number anything here tonight. Well, you got a lot of the media people from all over here. Malcolm Moran of USA today. you got Dick Weiss here. You got all the guys, Pat Forty from down in Louisville, bucked a bunch of writers before the game. It's a happy bunch here at Kentucky. Number four on Estill, he will leave, and Chuck Hayes will check back in. Even with Estill playing limited minutes, it's been one-sided tonight in favor of Kentucky. Just reminiscent now, back in the middle 90s when they were dominant. I mean, they just won three national titles in a row. Patino wins it in 96. Rick does. 97, they go to overtime. Lose to Arizona without Derek Anderson. That kid's going to be a great player. Anthony Roberson is going to be a great player if he wisely stays in school and doesn't get any wild thoughts about going to the NBA. One of the best sixth men in America already, and he's just a freshman. Nice steal there by Walsh. And he Look at that. So, what a pass. Back to Walsh from Roberson. And that's some of the Florida that we have seen earlier this year. We have not seen any of what Florida is capable of doing here tonight. The three senior starters remain on the bench. It's the two freshmen, Roberson and Walsh, trying to make this respectable for the Gators. That's what it's about now, fighting for respectability. Attempt to run some clock right now. Fitch lost it. Give credit to the guys on the floor right now for Florida. They are working hard, and they get it back on the arrow. Super Tuesday here in Lexington, all a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Novell, Kentucky and Florida. One of the best rivalries in the SEC. Dan Shulman along with Dick Vitale and Andy Katz, but it has not been a big rivalry here tonight. The way that Kentucky has smothered Florida in danger of giving Florida under Billy Donovan its most lopsided defeat, its lowest scoring game, and it may be the most humiliating 40 minutes that they have suffered. This is the number one team in the country. And Billy Donovan says, hey, the rankings don't mean that much. We may be, we probably aren't. Well, I think right now they know they've got some work to do to get to Kentucky's level. Walsh looking for the foul. Nobody's behind it. He puts it up again. Well, at least he stays with it. He comes back. Battles a little, shows a little toughness there, and that's what you want to see out of kids. You don't mind kids getting beat, but at least playing with a little pride. Yeah, Nelson back into the game for Florida. Hamilton as well. It's a 6-0 run for the Gators, their best sustained stretch of the night. Kentucky trying to take some time off the clock and some time out. They don't want to become too conservative. You know, I like to sing the praises of some unsung heroes. I should look at Tubby Smith. Kids that don't get a lot of recognition. Willie Green of Detroit, for example. He had 43 points. That's right, against Illinois, Chicago. Then he came back with 31 against Western Kentucky. Then also, what about against Howard? 
Maryland Eastern Shores, Thomas Trotter. He bumped in 42 points, seven trifectors. Terrence Woods, I bet you didn't know this, a Florida A&M. He had 11 of 16 three-pointers for 38 points and a win over North Carolina A&T. What about Vermont? Yes, sir. Vermont 6'9", sophomore. Mr. Taylor Coppenrath had 38 points. Carl Cedric Banks had 33. For Illinois, Chicago against Wright State. I'm telling you one thing, and Stephen F. Austin's coach, Danny Casper, you ready for this? I'm ready. He's unbeaten in Southland Conference. These guys never get on TV. See you guys? We recognize you, man. We gave you national publicity because you deserved it and because we got a blow up. <laughs> Well, how about uh, the Bracket Buster Saturday coming up in about two and a half weeks when a lot of the so-called mid-majors, some of the great programs in the country who don't get much attention, will get a chance to improve their RPI, play against some good teams. Nice play by yeah. Walsh. Get a little attention as well. Walsh to lead. Great hustle by Fitch on the defensive end. Five against four right now. That's why Lee's got the dunk. Fitch was sitting on press row. Kentucky getting a little complacent out there, getting a little bit where they're playing with the lead, and the crowd's not going to stand for it. Oh, yeah, they are going to stand for it. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to stand and let them know about it. Eight a run for Florida, but it's still a monumental deficit at 21. Kamara, Lee stays with him. Follow is good. What an effort under the basket by Chuck Hayes. Hayes is just a warrior. He's one of those guys, not spectacular, just steady. Florida's got a little bounce to it. Got a little bounce to it. That bounce was not there. There was no energy. There's energy for Chuck Hayes. What a oh, yeah. drive down. Walsh just pulls him down. No doubt about it. Walsh with a pull down. He looks like WrestleMania with that headband on. He looks like a Hulk Hogan move. He's not too happy about the haircut he may have to get. I'm what a three-point lead for the Cats. Third. I just wish I had his hair. Timeout on the floor. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Dollar Rent a Car. When it's your money, log on to dollar.com for our lowest rates. And in part by hotjobs.com. Check out new jobs daily at hotjobs.com, a Yahoo service. Onward, upward. Onward and upwards. And have the Kentucky Wildcats gone and out a 23 point lead. Over the Florida Gators, rivalry week presented by Novell. Don't forget, tomorrow night, it's NBA Wednesday over on ESPN2. Allen Iverson of the 76ers taking on the New Jersey Nets, who are 33 and 15. Coverage begins with NBA shoot-around at 7 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Dan Shulman to Dick Vitale and Andy Cass here at Rupp Arena in Lexington. The fans had to wait 24 years for a number one team to come to this building. The only other time it happened, the building opened in 76. Indiana was here as the number one team in the country in 79. And Kentucky beat them. And they're on their way to knocking off another number one team here tonight. 62-39. Now let's bring it Andy Katz while we have a minute. Andy, who doesn't like to sit still for very long, was up in Indianapolis last night. The first meeting of the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. And Andy was given a little exclusive access. What would you see up there, Andy? Well, there was a class. It was called Bracket 101. I was looking for Digger to be taking notes with me. He wasn't there. The class was about how to fill out the bracket and some of the new wrinkles they're going to try to put in there. And one of them is they're really going to look, you'll like this, Dick, at senior-laden teams when they lose late in the season, especially like Butler last season. In fact, there were like about 12 ah. Butler protesters there trying to wonder why they didn't get last season when they had 25 wins. So they're going to give them a little bit of a break if they lose a late game. They got a raw deal last year. Said it then. They beat Indiana and won 25 games. I hope and pray we don't see a team from the mid-majors get left out this year because of mediocrity by a team in a so-called highly visible conference. Andy, this early, do they do a mock bracket and start putting together their top seeds? Well, what they do is they do a mock bracket, but not with these teams. They just go through the process to make sure they all understand it. There's two new members 
of the selection committee. One other thing I want to throw back at Dick and see how he feels about this. Jim Livengood, the Arizona athletic director, told me they're going to really look closely at teams that have a sub-500 record and a high major, even more so this season, because there's so much parity. It's hard to justify that if it happens, even in the SEC, if a team were to be 7-9 and nine or something like that in a high major. I say amen to that. I'll tell you, talk about tomorrow, for example. We have North Carolina and Duke. North Carolina started off on fire. We saw them win the NIT. They now have nine losses. They're getting to the desperate stage yep. if the NCAA tournament is a goal of theirs. So tomorrow's game becomes a must almost with a four-game losing streak going down to Duke. But what a place to try and get a win. Pitch, no. And the rebound to Bonner. Well, while we were talking about the brackets, Dick was working on his, and we're pleased to announce he's put a second team into the Final Four, right? Oh, yeah, I got a second team. This baby's academic right now. I mean, there's no way in the world, looking at the body language here, that Florida has a chance of coming back and winning this game. My second team to join Kentucky, I'm going west, my friends. And I know they lost to Stanford, where Mike Montgomery's done a marvelous job. But I'm going with Lute Olsen and the Arizona Wildcats. Chalk City there for me. I'm going Chalk. I'm going Arizona. For the other two, you'll have to wait. Maybe Mike will drag it out of you tomorrow night at Cameron, who the third and fourth are. Yeah, Mike Patrick might get it out of me. <laughs> you know, I'm emotional. Whatever at the moment at that time, I might just come well, out and say it. We know that. <laughs> I thought I'm subject to change. So I'll meet other teams two weeks. 25-point lead for Kentucky. An outstanding defensive performance. They have been great defensively in SEC play. They've been better than great here tonight. Look at Hayesworth. He's just a look at him work. He's tenacious. Nice pass by Dreyer. Up to Roberson. Pitch defending, and he's called for the foul. I'll tell you, I would want to be Alabama and having to play this Florida team in front of the Roddy Reptiles this weekend. Mr. Godfrey's kids are going to see a different team that was witnessed on this floor here tonight. Well, maybe the only team in America as hot as Kentucky right now, Louisville. And they'll take on Cincinnati tomorrow night at 7 Eastern as Rivalry Week presented by Novell continues on ESPN. And then it's ACC Wednesday presented by Staples. As Dick mentioned, he's going to be there for one of the great rivalries in college basketball, even if one of the teams is down. It's North Carolina, it's Duke, and it's a big game for both, especially Carolina, as you just well, mentioned. Well, you know, big game also for Duke coming off a loss to Florida State. They got to get their veteran players to really step up, especially Chris Duhon, who has not stepped up to play and give them the kind of leadership lately that they expect out of them. Give me your thoughts on Louisville. Well, Louisville, 15 in a row. I mean, Rick Pitino in two years has done an amazing job. He's my mid-season coach of the year. I have mid-season player of the year, Kyle Korver, but now I'm telling you, the way Collison's coming on and also T.J. Ford, I don't know about you, Andy. I'm getting to love T.J. Ford as the possible player of the year. Well, here's what I asked you before the game. If I, if you, if I said pick one player to start your team from this season's college basketball players, who would it be? I said T.J. Ford. Your answer? I like T.J. as well. I'll tell you why I like T.J. It starts with backcourt play, especially at the point guard, and he's a big-time leader there. And I'm going to love this guy, Roberson. I liked him the first time I looked at him and watched him play. He is a special, special talent. A 20-point lead for Kentucky. It was 29 a few minutes ago, but this one has been academic really since about the five-minute mark in the first half. When Kentucky went on a big run in Florida, went 13 minutes making only one field goal. Well, you know, very complacent right now, playing with that big lead, very tough to stay, really focused as you look at Tubby. Tubby's not I'm just, complacent. I'm just a big fan. Take a look at right now the scoring defense as you look at them right here. Unbelievable. First in the SEC. Yeah, the New Year's resolution must have been to play better defense, and his kids have listened to him. One of the great mid-season changes that you've seen in a team this season. And it wasn't a pleasant time as you look at Robinson again. He had seven trifectors, as Jimmy Herrick about him, against Georgia. He had seven in the second half. Look at the crowd. They get Nancy, man. They want more. Lead down to 17. So at least they can take something positive for them in the last few minutes. They came back with a little pride as they went through a stretch there where they really were embarrassed the way they were playing. They were feeling sorry for one another. Well, there's a push inside that Estill got away with, and it gets Kentucky the ball back in a fresh 35. Uh -oh. No need to rush, but they do, and wave off the basket. There's a foul inside. That's another great environment, by the way, when you go to Gainesville with those Roddy Reptiles. Yep. 
Mr. Williams, and certainly Dudley and company are going to find that out this weekend. And Kentucky, remember, they've got to go down there. They close regular season play against Florida down in Gainesville. We are here at Rupp Arena in Lexington, a standing room only crowd of better than 23,000 enjoying this part of Rivalry Week presented by Novell, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Andy Katz, and Kentucky showing why they are one of the best defensive teams in the country here tonight. First half was the best defense I've witnessed in many a year, maybe a decade, for 20 minutes of play. As you look at the former head coach at Alabama, David Hobbs, sitting next to Tubby. They've coached together with J.D. Barnett at Virginia Commonwealth. J.D., a bright mind defensively, certainly affected them as well. Now he's a administrator down at Tulane. Tubby's got nine consecutive NCAA berths. Lou Olson has the most, 18. Chris Davis with you in the studio. UAB in Southern Mississippi in double overtime. Richard Jones misses the free throw. Dante Stigger's going to push it up for the Golden Eagles. And he'll find big Jasper Johnson. And Jasper delivers. 82 to 80. Southern Miss won it. They stormed the court, but all the people there, they could have fit them all into a Volkswagen. Texas and Colorado are locked up late in the second half. The Buffs have already beaten Kansas at home. And now they're giving the number three Longhorns a tussle. We'll keep you up to date. Uh, you do not want to be a highly ranked team. It seems you and I are going to have Texas at home against Oklahoma, part of Big Monday, six days from now. This was a huge game here on Super Tuesday, and Kentucky was more than up to the challenge here tonight. North Florida, the big problem for the first 30 minutes or so of this game, just shooting the ball, shooting the rock. Brought to you by Rolling Rock. Florida at 33% on the night. They were down at 20% early in the second half they've really made the numbers more respectable here late but the game was over a long time yeah it was ago. totally out of control out of hand there's no doubt Kentucky totally dominant we know Colorado by the way at home a very tough team on that home floor that door cut Walsh can't finish no call the point of Patton's club in fact they lost a heartbreaker on about a 40-foot shot against Jim Harris club right. there in fact I believe that was the only loss at home you know, for the moment we walked in here tonight, an unbelievable atmosphere, great crowd, better than 23,000 great signs all over the place, most of them with your name, <laughs> including one that says, Dickie V, tell LeBron James to come to UK. They've even got LeBron James <laughs> well, sign up there. One thing is LeBron James should be reinstated. I mean, there's no doubt that having that Hummer was a no-no because it just created an unbelievable element out there. Plus, wanting it was not good judgment. The bottom line is, should have waited to that for the end of the season, but he deserves to be playing. What did the kid really do? He didn't commit a crime. I mean, read Sally Jenkins' article in the Washington Post. She did a great job about that. Don't get me started with that story. Then the tip says the layup. He should be reinstated, Mr. Commissioner in Ohio. Let the kid finish and play. He gave back the jersey. We got athletes who commit crimes and they get standing ovations when they come back. What did the kid do? Somebody said, take your jersey, they'll take the picture. He gave them back. He was wrong. Yeah. He made a mistake. I'm 63 and I'm still making a mistake. <laughs> Christian Dreyer. Oh, what a swap by Mark Esco. I'll tell you one thing. Dreyer obviously is thinking a lot on the court. He's had so many injuries. So unfair to really evaluate him at this time because he hasn't had a chance really to get into the flow and feel himself. They're subbing. They're bringing them all in. Tubby's going to call off the dogs or the cats, as it were, as he brings in. Stockton and Carrier and Azubuke and Cote and Barber off the bench and what an ovation for these Kentucky starters. Not a place where you want to come in as number one in America. And Billy Donovan will echo that. We've said on the top of the show, reminiscent of the Super Bowl, defense versus offense. You saw what happened in the Super Bowl. Sap prevailed. He and his buddies Lynch and that guy Brooks over Mr. Gannon and the company. Three point basket. A three for Matt Walsh. Walsh picking it up here in the second half. Yeah. Well, they got it under 20. Look at it. Look, look, look at the bounce. Out. That's yeah. the kind of bounce they had from the moment this game began. They had that bounce when they sweated in here and I spoke to them before the game as they walked into the building. Florida's 14 game winning streak will come to a screeching halt. Kentucky's winning streak will go to 11. Rivalry night of the NBA coming up on Sports Center tonight. 
Michael takes on the Cavs, and as you had hoped, Mariucci. As Tom Izzo had hoped, uh, so Mariucci <laughs> should have never got the raw deal he did out there with the 49ers. Shame on the 49ers for what he achieved, but they're going to love him in the Motor City. Hey, by the way, Dick, with the new eruption zone here at Rupp Arena, down to our right where the students are, they took out seats, put in benches, they can fit more people into Rupp Arena. They've got the biggest crowd in the history of this building wow. here tonight. 24,459. And we had a chance to say we were here. Our buddies today went on a tour of Three Chimneys Farm down here. Saw a point given the horse. They saw all the super silver charm. So you got to get into those horses, I man. I know, I know. I mean, those farms <laughs> here in Lexington are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Playboard Farms and all of them. Calumet. Just a great, great place. CM Newman, I met his son out here today. It's just a great, great guy. Was the athletic director here, and he's the guy responsible for bringing Tubby Smith here. Really fortunate because he is the best. He said he is the best. It's nice when your boss loves you. Yeah. Does your boss love you? I don't know. I need some I love you're from my boss. boss. <laughs> I need some love from my boss. I mean, Dan Steer, my guy David Miller, Jed Drake. Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Bowden, I mean, give me some love. <laughs> Dreyer knocks it down. Well, we'll see what Billy Donovan does with the Gators as he tries to get them to put this game behind them. They're home against Alabama and then Ole Miss, and there aren't many easy games in the SEC. Hey, you're talking about unbeaten teams right now. There aren't many in league play. Dayton is 7-0. Mr. Purnell doing a great job in the Atlantic 10. Right. Brown is 4-0 in the Ivy with... Mark Few's going to be one of those hot names with some jobs open, and it might be a job open on the West Coast. Winning cures a lot, Dick. Hey, you know hey, that. hey. Who run? You made that sign up. You made that sign up. <laughs> Look at that defense. Always trying to pop the ball loose. Roberson slashes to the basket. I just love him. I just love his game. He and Walsh are going to be special players at Florida. Roberson, 18. He's the highest scorer in the game. Great balance for Kentucky tonight, but really the story. Again, the defense of the Kentucky Wildcats as they pick up their 11th win in a row and knock off the top-ranked team in the country. Hey, our colleague is here. Larry Conley does a great job for us here. Former Wildcat, they introduced him. He's jumping with joy as well. Great performance by Kentucky. An A-plus by Tubby Smith, the Wildcats, and all their fans here at Rupp. It's been unbelievable. The final score really flatters the Florida Gators. Kentucky was up by 29 at one point. They beat Florida by a score of 70 to 55. Kentucky now the only unbeaten team in SEC play. Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up here on ESPN with Dan Patrick and Carl Ravage. For Dick Vitale, Andy Katz, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman, and thanks for watching from Rupp Arena. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Number one goes down to defeat here in Lexington tonight. The abridged version of the game we just brought you, Florida and Kentucky, second half. Kentucky up big. The turnover and the unselfish play by Cliff Hawkins to Eric Daniels. Cubby Smith's troops up by 27. Next Florida possession, more of the same. Another turnover. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for number one. This is to call off the dogs. In this case, call off the cats. Billy Donovan needs a T.O. Kentucky over number one Florida in impressive style. 70 to 55 the final. You heard Dick Vitale a moment ago. We'll bring him back right now as he joins us live from Kentucky. Dick, you called it embarrassing. Was this more about Kentucky's dominance or Florida's inability to play in a tough environment? I'll tell you one thing. It was an unbelievable performance by Kentucky defensively. Their defensive effort in the first half, holding an unbelievable offensive team like Florida to 23 points, was amazing. And it just was a great, great job by everyone. They had great balance offensively, and they really did a great job passing the basketball. They posted the ball inside quickly to Esto. They got some play on the interior. Bogans was shooting the curl move. Coming off, shooting the jump shot. Defensively, they played the passing lanes really well. They got the ball out for some dunks. And the excitement and the energy here, guys, was something special. What an unbelievable environment. And that first half defensively was the best defensive effort I've witnessed in maybe 10 years doing games.
Difference here, 15 points. You were at a game in 98 when number one Duke lost to Carolina in 97-73. Because Florida came in number one, they had some added pressure on them. Who is number one right now, Dick? I would think right now it's still Arizona. I really do. I think Arizona is probably the best team in America in terms of looking at what they have. I know they lost that game to Stanford, but I really believe on a neutral floor with all their players, they're probably the best. But I'm telling you now, if I had to pick my final four, I got two teams already that I think in my mind are going to be there in New Orleans. And one is Arizona and this team Kentucky because the style of play of the tournament favors what they do. Great defense, half-court play, and balance. They do a great job with balance offensively. The fact that you can only name two right now is a little different from years past. Is this, in all the years you've covered college basketball, the most parity you've ever seen? It really is. I'll tell you, it's amazing. And I think what's really changed the game, guys, has been the three-point shot. It's revolutionized the game. It's changed the complexion of games amazingly when teams just get on fire. We also have the scholarship reduction rate out there no longer where teams can load up with a number of players down to 13 scholarships. And all that has brought about balance. Plus, there's balance because of all the heavyweight teams getting hurt by players leaving early. Yeah. So with all of those factors, we have parity. And I know it's great, but but you know what? I miss having that dominant team, the super team that everybody wants to chase. They have that in women's basketball. UConn right now. <laughs> Dick, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks a lot, guys. Right, take a look at the numbers. And again, difficult to pinpoint the biggest loss by a number one team. But that 98 game when Carolina beat Duke by 24 certainly ranks up there. Playing the number one team in Rupp Arena history, only the second time that's happened. Indiana did it a year after it opened. And look, Indiana, they lost as well to Kentucky. So they have twice faced a number one, and they have twice beaten a number one. Breakdown. Brought to you by McDonald's.